Hello YouTube, welcome to the YouTube Symphony Orchestra Masterclasses. I'm Paul Silverthorne, I'm Principal Viola of the London Symphony Orchestra and I'm here to give you a few helpful hints, I hope, on the audition pieces for this year's YouTube Symphony Orchestra. The first piece you've been asked to play is the finale from Starlitz's D major, Viola Concerto. This makes a nice change, as usually you're asked to do the first movement. This, this finale is not so virtuosic, and it's a matter of capturing the right style and playing with grace and neatness and beauty of tone. Uh, the first thing to do is to make sure you don't start too fast. It's very tempting to play the opening tune a little bit too briskly. If you do that, you'll get into trouble later when it gets much faster. There are more notes to fit in in the bar. The essence of this opening tune is not speed and agility, but grace, and it's marked dolce, which should give you a clue. So I would aim for a tempo more like... And that may seem a little tame, but it'll stand you in good stead later in the movement. You'll find that all the different episodes will all work at that speed. For instance, the next, the next one, which is more, more lyrical. And also the minor section, which comes a little later. Then most importantly, when you do start dashing around with sextuplets, six sixteenth notes to the beat, you won't be in too much of a panic. You can still play with a certain amount of elegance and not be dashing around like a maniac. You've also been asked to offer a movement from Bach's first cello suite, the G major suite. Um, I won't go through all the movements, but try and give you some general hints on playing Bach in audition. Uh, there are so many different opinions about how Bach should be played, you can't please everybody. So the important thing is to, to play in a style that you really believe in. Play honestly the way you feel the music, and that will come across. If you try and do what you think other people will want, that won't work. This, this suite, is perhaps the, the most straightforward stylistically. It's not, not such complex music as the later suites and is very open and natural in style. So don't, don't lose that. The, the, opening, the opening movement is just arpeggiated chords and don't try and make too much fuss about the articulation, the phrasing of it. Just let the, the harmonies open naturally. If you choose one of the dance movements, then try and make sure that you do keep the dance character. They're all, all very distinct. The Allemande, the second one, is quite flowing and gentle in style. But the Courant, which if you look at it, you can see that see the big jumps that Bach's written in all the way through, through the piece. Give, that gives you a clue to the kind of energy it needs. It needs a slightly more robust approach than perhaps some of the other movements. So enjoy, enjoy the big jumps, Cap capture the character of the movement. The Sarabande should not be too slow. The addition I'm looking at now gives a metronome mark in eighth notes. Ignore that. Even though it's slow, it should still be in a quarter note pulse. Otherwise, you won't feel the proper Sarabande rhythm. The minuet, unlike some of the others, is again a very gentle movement. It's not, not as lively as some in the, the later 
later suites. Uh, so again, feel, feel a nice flowing line. And then contrast it nicely with the jig. Again, not too fast, but lots of rhythmic energy. That's only a brief look at the suite, but I hope there are some helpful hints in there. One piece that always comes up in auditions is the scherzo from Mendelssohn's Midsummer Night's Dream. There are obvious reasons for this. It requires a very good control of spiccato and neat finger work, and it's a really very good test of a player. Uh, we've been quite kind to you in these auditions because we haven't asked you for the hardest bits, just the, just the opening 16 bars. So you haven't got the long runs of 16th notes to cope with, only short bursts of them. So let's take advantage of that. Basically, the rhythm we're after is... It's very important that this stroke is done not with the whole arm, but with a relaxed wrist and fingers. If you use the whole arm, it's very uncontrollable and the sound will be hard and brittle, like this. It's important to keep the fluidity in the hand and hardly any involvement of the right arm at all. If this is something you're having difficulty with, don't, don't try and learn the stroke with Mendelssohn's music. Use your scales or something like Kreutzer study number two and then come back to this when you've got more comfortable with it. Then start practicing the whole thing. Those ambitious ones amongst you who, who want to try out for principal in YouTube Symphony Orchestra, best of luck to you. You've got the chance to play this glorious melody from Berlioz Harold in Italy. Um, the, the, the passage we want is the very, very opening of the viola solo. And it, the piece is marked a scene of melancholy, happiness and joy. So it definitely starts in melancholy and at the end of the solo, you're joyous and passionate. So it's a real test of your expressive abilities on the instrument and your ability to hold a line for really quite a long time. It's a very long tune. I haven't counted the bars, but it's the whole of the first page is really one melodic span. So a few, few ideas on this. Berlioz wrote this at the request of Paganini, who had just acquired a, a wonderful Stradivarius viola, which he wanted to play. And I'm sure the sound of that instrument was in Berlioz's head as he wrote this first movement of Harold in Italy. The wonderful golden singing tone this instrument must have had. So whatever instrument you play, even if it's a Chinese viola with Stradivarius in the label, aim for that in your the singing bow stroke and warm rich vibrato. In the next phrase, he asks to be played as sweetly as possible and three Ps, really, really quiet. And this is one instance in the solo repertoire where you really can play very quietly 
The orchestration here is incredibly delicate. So even on your webcam and your audition for YouTube, see how, how quietly you really can play it. while still keeping a nice melodic line. Gradually, gradually the, the piece works up and becomes more impassioned and more joyous. So as, as that happens, really open out the sound and let us hear what you can do melodically. The scariest audition piece, I think, for everybody is Strauss's Don Juan. It's, it's difficult in, in every, every way, and it comes up in almost every audition for all the string instruments. So there's no way I can make it easy, but I can perhaps give you some helpful ideas. The opening phrase, the main fault I often hear when people play it is they stop too many times. And if Don Juan had stopped at every bar in his life, he wouldn't have got the reputation he had. It's very important the opening phrase dashes right through from the beginning to the end. <laughs> Then in contrast, we have the rich uh, arching melody. Again, be very careful here to pay attention to Strauss's articulations. Uh, for instance, <laughs> he puts the accent on the 16th note, which is not where you're expecting it. If you play it the way you'd expect, you'd accent virtually everything else. Pay attention to that and the fact that the next phrases are really legato. <laughs> The passage that scares everyone most is the final G major arpeggio up to the D. <clears throat> Again, there's no way of making this easy, but keep your cool and find the one fingering that works for you and uh, just practice and practice and practice. There are, there are two possible ways of getting up to that top D. Most people choose to go up gradually in stages. That's never worked very well for me at speed. I prefer to wait to the last minute and go up in one, one final shift. But each to their own. In the next passage, again, as in the Mendelssohn, we, have, we need a very nicely controlled spiccato. It's harder here because it's, it comes out of a forte passage and it's in triplets and alternates legato and spiccato. Don't try and bounce the bow too high or else it'll be very messy and not together. So keep it very controlled. If you allow it to jump too far off the string, you won't be able to control the legatos or control the rhythm. Well, I hope those comments were of some help to you. Best of luck with your practicing and I look forward to seeing your videos.